Greetings, Ian from RTO here. Hope you've had a, had a good weekend. Um, I've been pretty lousy. I've had a bit of a head cold. It's sort of going away. But uh, I had this thing this morning saying if I'm not well, I'm not doing anything. But I feel a little bit better today. And I think if I carry on, I will fight this. Anyway, enough of my ailments. Um, here we go again, another week. And um, we're starting off with, I think, part four of the Rick Wakeman story. And we're now reached the 2000s. Start of the new century. And uh, during the 2000s, um, Rick released 12 albums. A mixture of rock, prog and piano. So... Uh, we're going to look at them 12 now. So coming in at number 12, we have an album that was released in the year 2000, and it's called Christmas Variations. And it's a collection of Carol's keyboards. They're all very traditional Christmas carols. We've got Silent Night, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Christmas is Coming, Salute the Happy, Away in the Mangers, while shepherds watched their flocks by night, O little town of Bethlehem, it came upon a clear midnight clear, once in Royal David City, O come ye all ye faithful, and angels from the realms of glory. I think this is a really good Christmas album, um, and it is one that I do play over Christmas. Good to get the Christmassy mood. Uh, I don't mind this at all. Uh, it's the only time I ever play it. Um, and I do like it, so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 5 out of 10. Okay, then coming in at number 11, an album from 2009 called Past, Present and Future. Now this is a 3 CD with Rick on the piano. It's CD 1 is Past, CD 2 is Present and of course CD 3 will be Future. Now they're all nice piano pieces. Um, I do like it, don't get me wrong. Um, we've got on the past, we've got A Voyage of Discovery, Once Upon a Time, The First Dawn, The Ice Age, Distant Dreams, Melodrama, Serpia Moments, To Those We Loved, Victoriana, Eden, Perchance to Dream, One Journey, and Mystical Tales. The present is White Light, Heaven Alone, Parallel Words to Capture the Moment of View from Above, above Sorry. In an Instance, A Test of Time, Circle of Time, In a Perfect World, Living the Dream, The Moment in the Time, op with Open Arms and As Nature Intended. And the future bit is A Galaxy of Light, Fear of Unknown, Second Chance, Into the Unknown, The Visionary, no turning back, maybe one day, the secret path, the final journey, and beyond the rainbow. Now, they are all very good, don't get me wrong, but a three CD box set of just piano, it's something you can't put on and play all the way through. I mean, I do play, the, I do play this in bits and bobs, but it is a little bit tedious to release a 3D box set of this thing and they're all very very similar so I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 5.5 okay then coming in at number 10 we have an album from the 2002 and it's called The Wizard and the Forest of All Dreams this is Rick Wakeman on the piano and keyboards with the English Chamber Choir Again, this is an album that's just piano and choir. It's all very nice. Uh, but I'll tell you, we'll go through the tracks. We've got The Meeting of the Minds, A Wish to Fly, Childhood Dreams, A Sense of Heaven, A Year and a Day, and The Gift of Life. My only problem with this is that they're really nice songs, but they are all long songs. The shortest song on here is Seven Minutes. And 17 seconds and the longest being 10 minutes and 55 um, it gets a little bit repetitive um, it's an album that I don't own and I have listened to it a few times but it's not one that really I want to have on my list so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 5.6 
Okay then, coming in at number nine, we'll go to another album from the year 2000, and it is called Morning Has Broken. This is a collection of hymns played on the piano and keyboard by Rick. So the tracks on here we've got now, Thank We All Our Lord, There Is A Green Hill Far Away, Glad That I Live I Am, All Things Bright and Beautiful, Jesu Lover of My Soul, A Stonking Version of Jerusalem, O Come, O Come Emmanuel, All That On Earth Do Dwell, I Vow to Thee, My Country, I Love That, and Hills of the North, when I survey my wondrous cross, morning has broken, the FA Cup hymn Abide With Me, and The Day Thou Scavest. Okay, um, it's, just, it's a good um, piano, it sort of reminds me of my school days, you know, school assemblies and all these hymns. Um, so, so it's okay, it's a, I don't dislike it. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 6 out of 10. Okay then, coming at number 8. We go to 2001 now. And an album called Classical Variations. This is again another sort of our piano type album from Rick. Um, with some of the classical uh, variations. So we have first one on here is, I get this right, Pathetic by Beethoven, it's a lovely piece of music and Rick does a fine performance of it. Then we get Meditation, but which is by Jules and Massenet. Yeah, it's a nice interpretation of that. Then we get a Puccini piece, Oh My Beloved Father, which sounds all right to me. Then we get Oh For The Wings Of A Dove, of course by Mendelssohn, very good. Then we get my favourite piece, and one of my favourite pieces of music, Parvain by Fiore. Love that piece. Um, Jethro Tull do a good version of that as well. Then Burkhurst by Fiore again, another lovely piece. Then we get Largo by Handel, very deep version of that. S the Swan by San, San Sian, I think that was pronounced like that piece as well. Where You Walk is another Handel piece. And then we get variations of the New World Symphony which is pretty cool and that is Dvorak. And it's a very nice album of classical pieces. Got no problems with it, it's very good to the ear. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 6.5 Okay then, coming in at number seven, another album from the two, from the year 2000 and it's Preludes to a Century. This is an album of piano pieces written at the dawn of the new millennium. Uh, on here we've got Prelude to a Millennium, Only a Dream, A Waltz of Life, Forevermore, The Dance in Piano, Reflections of a Winter's Day, A New Dawn, Lullaby, Season of Change, Waiting for God, Vienna by Moonlight and the Cycle of Life. Really, really good little piece. Um, some nice pieces on there. My favourite is the Reflections of a Winter's Day because it really intensifies them crisp winter's days. Really good track that is. Um, it's just a really good piano album, and I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of seven out of ten. Okay, coming in at number six, another album from the year 2000. Um, this is The Chronicles of Man. Now, this is the follow-up album to The Heritage Suite, which, of course, it was an album that inspired where he was living at the time on the Isle of Man. And um, we've got The Siege, which is brilliant, which is my favourite piece, first track. The Abbey Garden, The Banquet, uh, Heritage of Man, The Monk's Prayer, The Chapel by Candlelight, which is very moving. Castle Rushed, Russian, or Rushton, Rushen, I don't know. Around here we'd say Ru how it's spelled is Rushton, but that's a Northampton thing. And the Ruin, Olaf, the, Pe the Peasant's Dance, Chronicles, Jesters at Court, which is quite medieval, which is pretty good, and the Monastery, as you would expect, it's quite um, oh, 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 sort of thing. Um, nice way to end the album. Another piano album. 
lots of chill tracks on here. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.5. Okay, now we're going to move into the more rocky pop stuff. So coming at number five, we get a 2006 and an album called Retro. On here we've got Rick Wakeman doing all the uh, um, keyboards. Ashley Holt back to do some vocals. Has done quite a bit of work with, with Rick. Daughter Gemma doing the backing vocals. Dave Colquorn on the guitars. Lee Pomeroy, who's worked with him before on bass, and the ever-present drummer Tony Fernandez. Uh, first track on this one is called Just Another Day. Real good modern-day progressive rock track. Some great keyboards swirling around there. The vocal is really good from Ashley. Um, good track, like that one. Um, Mr. Lonely comes next. Again, this has got that mixture of rock. But what he uses here is... An 80s sounding keyboard that actually fits and got the backing vocals from Gemma which is really good. Um, one in the eye, this is what I call the classic sounding Rick Wakeman. All that stuff from the 70s, that prog stuff, it's really good. The sound and keyboards, it's just undenying that it's Rick Wakeman. Men in Suits, not a bad track, that modern day sounding 70s sort of track you know using the technology of the day really good leave the blindfold very catchy tune a nice vocal here from Gemma very very nice waveform another quirky track I love the keyboards in here how he sort of stabs at them let me get my favorite track it's called a retrospective the combination of the different layers of keyboards on this some short stabby hits on the keys the drumming on here from Tony Fernandez is pretty good. I do like that track. Homage to the Doctor. This sort of reminds me of a 1980s cop show sort of theme to it. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a quite a long track, but it it flows rather well. Um, Can you smell burning? Got some Hammond organ on here, which always sounds good. And Tony's drumming is really good on that as well. Then we get the Stalker. This starts off with a fanfare, all the pomp, pomp and circumstance. Uh, you get with the fanfares, and then you get this great vocal from Ashley. Solid track to win the album. Uh, then we... Sorry, I've got mixed up there, didn't I? I haven't reviewed it. Um, it's a really good album, I think. It's got, it's got that 70s feel to it, but using that modern technology, and I think it turned out a very good album. So I'm going to call, give this one a RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. Okay, then coming at number 4, we're going to 2002 now. And an album called Two Sides of Yes, Volume 2. Pretty cool cover, isn't it, Mr. Dean? So this is interpretations of six songs, which was the sequel to The Two Sides of Yes. So on here we've got Rick, of course. Alan Thompson on the bass and drums. So it's only piano, drums and bass. Um, Awaken. Really nice version of this. This is just all done on a piano. Uh, stripped down. Sounds really good. Then we get Siberian Kahatru. I don't know how to pronounce that. Never have. Uh, but you know the track I'm on about. It's a very good version of it though. The keyboards sound really good. Same sort of way that done on the original very very good Matt Griel uh, very gentle nice then we get a fantastic version of Starship Trooper um, it's one of my favorite songs on here um, the best bit though is Worm that bass sounds great the piano sound the keyboards all sound brilliant really really good then we get Heart of the Sunrise now this is just piano interpretation Stripped another yes song, stripped si stripped down to its bare essentials, proves what a good song it was. And then the last track and my favourite interpretation of a yes song, "Going for the One." I really like this. Still, you got the. G it just sounds so good. Um, really good song. There's some great interpretations of classic yes songs. Some of my favourites are on here, and. 
I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.2. Okay, then coming at number three, get to 2007 now, and the follow up to Retro, Retro 2. Rick's playing all sorts on here Mellotrons, Hammond organs, Mini Moogs, all the good stuff. Um, got vocals is done by Elliot Tuffin. Gemma Wakeman's back to do some singing as well. Dave Colquorn again, Lee Pomeroy and Tony Fernandez doing the bass, guitars and drums. Chasing the Drevel is the uh, opening track. It's a little rock track. Love the beat to this. Uh, it's got a little great guitar work here from Dave Colquorn. A uh, really good track and the choral bit is really good as well. Um, expect the Unexpected. This reminds me of some of the early 70s stuff from the Yes. Pretty good guitar work on this. Um, I like that track a lot. Beyond the Void. Progressive rock for the noughties. Solid keyboard swirls. Some great guitar work. The solo is pretty good. Solid track. An Angel Spoke to Me. This is a song sung by Gemma Wakeman and it's really nice. What a lovely voice she's got. Love that track. Uh, then we get the soundtrack. Another really good rock track here. One of my favourites on the album. The keyboard from Ricky Superb. Then we get, believe it or not, my favourite piece. It's called the Fairground Shuffle. Now this is a one of them bright time blues, quirky piano pieces, like Keith Emerson, Keith Emerson used to do on some of the ELP albums. I love ragtime piano, and I love that track. It's my favourite track. Then we get this quite weird track called Robert the Robot. A little bit different, ah, but the keyboard's a little bit high-pitched. Then we get a track called Standing Room Only. It's, it's created that 80s synth sound that was a bit cheesy and just tweaked it a little bit, and it's... It's a nostalgic track. Tick of the Bounce, a really nice piece of music. It's very odd track on the album, but it works. Let me get a track called The Temple of Life. It's really good, but after about five minutes, it sort of loses itself. Um, it's just a little bit too long for me. It's six minutes too long. Um, it's a really good a album. I think the last track is a little bit too long, as I said. But the rest of the album is pretty solid. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.4. Okay, then coming in at number two, we've got a 2001. And the two sides of Yes. I uh, really like that cover as well. Um, so it's Rick Wayman, Alan Thompson on the bass and Tony Fernandez again. First track is Your Move. Um, it's a piano sort of version of the Your Move bit of I've Seen All Good People. Very good. I like that in piano interpretation. Then we get the fantastic Wondrous Stories. It's a really good track. This is has really been stripped down again, and it's a really nice track. Then we got a thing called Long Distance, which is of course Long Distance Run Around. Uh, it's a very good interpretation, all done on the piano, and it sort of strips it down into the basics, and it's a really good version of it. Um, just like the next one, Don't Kill the Whale. Great little track. The keyboards on this sound really well. Um, I think the keyboard, the main keyboard bit on this sounds a lot better than it did on the original, actually. Pretty good. Then we get close to the edge. Well, 7 minutes and 35 seconds of it. It's very shortened, but it's all done on the piano. It's really been stripped out, down, and you can tell what an intricate and brilliant track it is. Uh, then we get Run at Roundabout. Great version of this. Still got that funky keyboard bit in it. It's really good. And then we get the meeting. It's another nice piece to end the album. Out of the two of the Yes albums you've done, this is the best one, I think. It's really got some great versions of these songs, especially the piano pieces. Really strip these songs down, and you can hear how they probably were constructed. Um, so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.5. Okay, my number one. Now, when I first heard this, 
I thought, hmm, he's a good singer. <laughs> and I realised it was Damien Wilson. Yeah. Come out in 2003 and it's called Out There. So it's keyboard, it's Rick Wakeman and the new version of the English Rock Ensemble. So it's Rick Wakeman on the keyboards, Fraser T. Smith on guitars, Tony Fernandez as ever on the drums, Damian Wilson on the vocals, Ant Glynn on guitars, Lee Pomeroy again on the bass, the English Chamber Choir and conductor Guy Pethero. First track is the title track, Out There. This is brilliant. 2000s prog at its best. And when you get a great singer like Damian Wilson, you're not going to go wrong, are you? It's, I think it was a great choice to choose Damien for this. Very good thing. Rick's on fire on the keyboards on this. The Mission, brilliant track. Uh, great vocal from Damien. How he hits them high notes is unbelievable. It's a really good, strong track again to be with you. Nice guitars on this. Again, really strong track like that one. Universe of the Sound, a great rock track. This is the riffs on this from this guy, Ant Glynn. Really good. Got a lovely Lee Pomeroy bass line that sort of gels everything together. It's a really good instrumental. Music of Love, absolutely brilliant again. Them strong, real good riffs. The drumming from Tony is always on, on the mark. And... Damien of course. Let me get my favourite track on this, The Cathedral of Sky. This is Damien's best um, vocal on this album and I think it's one of the most impressive pieces of music that Damien sang on in a long time. Um, I love the sound of this. You've got that church organ. It's rich. It's atmospheric. You get the choir coming in and then Damien starts singing. It is just a fantastic piece of music. Good way to win the album. Um, up to this moment in time, 2003, it's the best thing that he'd done or put out since the return to the journey to the centre of the earth. It's just an amazing album, this is. Um, I play this a lot. It's one of my favourite albums by Rick. And I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 9 out of 10. So there we go. That's the 2000s of Rick. Um, next week we've got from the year 2010 to 2020. Not so many next week. Um, you know, he's getting older. <laughs> Not putting out the material as he used to. But all good stuff. Well, some of it's good some of it's not but that's Rick Wakeman for you so um, that's for next week but later today another we've got a classic album and this one's a bit bizarre but then we do obscure stuff here don't we we're going to look at the soundtrack of the sound of music because this is an album that was the best-selling album in the UK charts album charts in 19 65, 66, and I think 68 off the top of my head. And the second best album of the decade. Why? When there were so many great albums. If you want to know why, tune into that one. So I will see you for that later. Bye for now.